Today we're going to be talking about type 1 and type 2 regions and how to use double integrals to find the area of regions defined as type 1 or type 2. In this particular problem, we've been given the double integral of x squared and this figure here, which is an area defined by four separate areas made up of each of these four triangles here. And I've labeled the different regions d sub 1, d sub 2, d sub 3, and d sub 4 so we can distinguish them from each other. The way that we're going to find the area of this figure is by finding the area of each triangle individually and then adding the area of the four of them together. But before we do that, let's talk about type 1 regions and type 2 regions. So type 1 regions you can think of as regions that are easy to define by an upper and a lower bound. So for example, if we had two parabolas like this, one parabola here and then another parabola that was more shallow, maybe like this, we could say that this is a type 1 region because it's really easy to see that this shallow parabola is an upper bound and the narrower parabola is a lower bound. And if we wanted to take slices of this, it would be really easy to take vertical slices like this. It wouldn't be as easy to take horizontal slices as you can imagine if we tried to take a slice right here, we'd run into this and then you know we'd continue the slice over here. It doesn't really make as much sense. It's not as easy. So we'd be wanting to take vertical slices. We'd have an upper bound, a lower bound. This is a type one region. On the other hand, if we have a figure like this, maybe we have a parabola here that's opening out to the right and then we have a line like so and these two graphs intersect one another. This region is easier to define by a rightmost bound here, the line is the right bound, and a leftmost bound where the parabola is a left bound and it's easier to take slices of this region that are horizontal like this. So if we take slices like this, it's real easy to do that. Because of that, this would be a type 2 region. And sometimes, depending on the kind of region it is, it's possible to treat the region as either a type 1 region or a type 2 region. This particular problem that we're dealing with here is interesting because the areas that we have, the regions d sub 1, 2, 3, and 4, can be treated either as type 1 regions or type 2 regions. I want to show you guys how to treat them as type 1 and type 2 and how that changes our double integral. So if we wanted to find, for example, the area of the region d sub 1, so this triangle here in the upper right. If we treat it as a type 1 region, we're going to be integrating our double integral first with respect to y, then with respect to x. So that's the other thing about type 1 and 2 regions. Type 1 regions are associated with an order of integration first with respect to y, then with respect to x. Type 2 regions are associated with the opposite order of integration. We would integrate first with respect to x, and then with respect to y. So if I treat this region here, d sub 1, as a type 1 region, let's go ahead and draw a picture of it that is larger. So this is our region here, d sub 1, and this point here is at 0, 1. This point here is at 1, 0, the coordinate point 1, 0, and this here is d sub 1. If I integrate first with respect to y, remember my order of integration is going to be with respect to y first, then with respect to x. If I integrate first with respect to y, then I'm looking at vertical slices like this, like we drew here in our type 1 region diagram. Well, those vertical slices, each one, the upper limit of that vertical slice is defined by the top of this triangle here, which is at the line y equals 1. So the upper limit of integration here would always be y equals 1. And no matter where I take a vertical slice, whether I take it here on the left or all the way over here on the right, the upper coordinate point here is always going to be 1, so my upper limit of integration is 1. My lower limit of integration, though, is going to change, right? This point here has a different y value than this point here, which has a different y value than this point here. So I can't give a constant for the lower limit of integration with respect to y. I have to instead give the equation of this line so that I can say no matter where I take my slice right here, the lower limit of integration is defined by the value of the function that is this line here. Well, the line I've already written, the equation of the line, it's y equals negative x plus 1. 
if I'm treating this as a type 1 region, then I want this equation to find 4y in terms of x, and my lower limit of integration is then negative x plus 1. Then of course my limits of integration with respect to x here are going to be 0 and 1 because the leftmost value attained in this region for x is at 0, right? Right here, the leftmost value is x equals 0. The rightmost value is this line here, which is at x equals 1, this point here. So we have 0 and 1, 0 being the leftmost value x can attain, and 1 being the rightmost value that x can attain. So those would be my limits of integration. If I treat this instead as a type 2 region, and I'm taking horizontal slices like this, I'm integrating first with respect to x here, and notice that my upper limit of integration, the rightmost value here that x attains, is always going to be x equals 1. Just like we said up here, that y was always going to be y equals 1. That was the highest value it attained. Over here on the right-hand side, the highest value it ever attains, and it's constant, it's always going to be 1. The lower limit of integration, again, is defined by this slanted line here. Because I'm defining it in terms of a type 2 region and I'm integrating first with respect to x, I would need to solve this equation here, y equals negative x plus 1, in terms of x. And the way I would do that is by subtracting 1 from both sides, I'd get negative x equals y minus 1. I'd multiply both sides by negative 1, and I'd get x equals 1 minus y, and I'd want to say that my lower limit of integration here is 1 minus y, which is just the equation of this line, but it needs to be in terms of x. So that would be here for dx. dy here, the lowest value that y will ever attain is 0 right here, so my lower limit of integration with respect to y is 0. The highest value it'll ever attain is this line here, which we know is y equals 1, so the highest value there is 1. So I can write the area of this region as a type 1 integral or a type 2 integral. Let's write it first as a type 1 integral. The integral for type 1 of this particular region, d sub 1, will be the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from negative x plus 1 to 1 of our equation here, x squared, that we were given. And of course, we have dy dx. The type 2 integral, and we'll come back to these in a second, but I want to show you the contrast of the two. The integral, if we treat this as a type 2 region, will be the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 1 minus y to positive 1, again of our equation x squared, and then dx dy. So what we notice here is that if we have a type 1 integral, then we integrate first with respect to y, then with respect to x. So the order is dy, then dx. That means because dy here is on the inside, that means that our inside integral has to have limits of integration with respect to y. And we found that those were negative x plus 1 to 1, so we put that there. Then because dx is on the outside, the integral with respect to x is on the outside, and we know that our limits of integration for x in the type 1 region were 0 to 1. And then for type 2, the opposite case, we have the same equation but we reverse the order of integration. We have dx, then dy. We integrate first with respect to x, then with respect to y. Because dx here is on the inside, we have our limits of integration with respect to x, which remember we found here as 1 minus y to 1. So we have that here. And then our limits of integration here with respect to y on the outside, because dy is on the outside, and we know that those are from 0 to 1. We found those over here. Now it's not always easy or possible to express every region as a type 1 and type 2 region, but in this case, because we have a triangle in this way, we can express the integral as type 1 or type 2. So this is, remember, just the integral for the area d sub 1. We could use either integral, the type 1 integral or the type 2 double integral, to evaluate this and we would get the same answer. Let's go ahead and evaluate one of them. We'll go ahead and evaluate the type 1 and ignore the type 2 integral. So if we evaluate this type 1 here double integral, remember we'll evaluate first with respect to y. If we evaluate with respect to y, take the integral with respect to y, then x squared is just a constant, which means we need to add a y. So what we'll get here is 0 to 1 of x squared y. And we'll be evaluating that on the interval, 
negative x plus 1 to 1. And remember that this is going to be something we plug in for y. So we'll get y equals negative x plus 1 and y equals 1. I like to write the y equals in there so I remember that I plug these limits of integration in for y instead of in for x. So now if I plug in my limits of integration, I'll get 0 to 1 of x squared times, I'll plug in my upper limit of integration first, which is 1, minus x squared times my lower limit of integration, negative x plus 1, and then I've got dx. If I simplify here, 0 to 1 of x squared, negative x squared times a negative x is plus x cubed. Negative x squared times a positive 1 is minus x squared. Notice that I'll get my x squared minus x squared. Those will cancel, and I'll just be left with x cubed. So we'll have, if I integrate, 1 fourth x to the fourth evaluated on 0 to 1, because here we're integrating with respect to x. We have the dx here. Then when I plug in my limits of integration, I'll get 1 fourth times 1 to the 4 minus 1 fourth times 0 to the 4. This is obviously going to go away. 1 to the 4th is just 1. And I'm left with 1 fourth as a value for my area of the region d sub 1. Now, if you wanted to, you could independently find d sub 2, 3, and 4, and you could treat all of them as type 1 integrals or type 2 integrals. It would work either way. But of course, as you can see, d sub 1 is the same area as d sub 2, 3, and 4. So for this particular problem, all I really need to do is multiply this by 4 to get the area of the entire region. And I can say d sub 1 plus d sub 2 plus d sub 3 plus d sub 4 is really just equal to d sub 1 times 4 because they are all equal regions and I know that that's going to be equal to 1 fourth times 4 which is just 1. That's the area of the entire region. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.